And let's read chapter 15 of Out of My Mind. The next morning, we get to the first snowfall of the season. Big, fat flakes fall outside the windows of room H5. Freddy zooms over and touches the window. Nice, he says. Mrs. Shannon rolls all of us closer so we can watch the snow accumulate on the grass and trees. It's really pretty. Even Jill seems to relax. We're going to play in the snow, asks Maria. No, Maria, it's too cold to play outside, but guess what? It's getting close to Christmas, Maria cheers. I've heard it's some sort of tradition around here to decorate this old styrofoam snowman, Mrs. Shannon continues. She makes a face as she pulls Sydney's head out of the box. Maria starts to hug it, but Mrs. Shannon stops her and says, I believe the smell of fresh pine trees at holiday time and real candy canes and popcorn garland. <sighs> Tomorrow, I'm bringing a real tree and we're going to make it beautiful. Freddie and Carl slap palms. Maria looks disappointed and for a moment she seems to forget about the snowman as Mrs. Shannon gives everyone a soft piece of chocolate candy. She wisely stuffs Sydney back into his box. While Mrs. Shannon shows the rest of the class how to make paper snowflakes, Catherine and I sit together in front of the only chunky classroom computer and do web searches on communication devices. It is so slow. Sometimes it gets jammed up and stalls, and we have to reboot it and start all over. Room H5 always gets the big leftover computers that the other classrooms no longer want. Catherine and I research all kinds of electronic talking and communication devices that have been designed for people like me. Lots of them seem clunky and awkward as our room computer. Some look really complicated. All of them are expensive. Crazy expensive. Some of the websites don't even list the prices, like they're afraid to tell us how much the thing actually costs. The devices that use standard computer keyboards wouldn't work. I'd have no way to hit the individual keys. I need something that would work just with my thumbs. We find adapted computers, talking boards that speak of words, push button systems, even devices that work with blinks or head nods. Finally, we find something called a meta talker that looks like a possibility. It has spaces big enough for my thumbs to get into and millions of words and phrases built into it. I watched an online video of a boy about my age using one. And even though he clearly has no voice of his own, this little box lets him tell all of the details of his recent birthday party. I get so excited that my legs start kicking and my arms start flailing, and I look like some sort of crazy human helicopter. Catherine prints out the information and tucks it into the book bag that is attached to the back of my chair. Good luck, Melody, she whispers as she leaves for the day. When I get off the bus after school, Mrs. V is waiting for me as usual. I almost twist out of my seat trying to point to my bag to let her know I have something important in it. Hold your horses, Mrs. V says. Since when are you so excited to do homework? What's got you all in a tizzy today? I just grin and kick after my snack of caramel candy first and the tuna melt last. And after Penny, who has just gotten up from her nap, eats her applesauce, Mrs. V finally pulls the paper out of my bags. Well, this is exactly what you need, Mrs. V says, slapping the printouts onto the table after reading them. No wonder you're all fired up. Yes, 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 I point. Then I point to individual words. Talk to mom and dad. Talk, talk, talk. I'll do just that, just as soon as they get home from work, Melody, Mrs. V promises. I can hardly wait. While Penny watches Cookie Monster gobble carrots instead of cookies on Sesame Street, I dream of talking, talking, talking. When Mom picks us up, Mrs. V, true to her word, not only shows Mom the printouts, but even has her computer already set to the webpage where the MetaTalkers advertised and sold. Penny sits on Mom's lap and keeps pushing computer keys, messing up the display, which is just getting on my nerves. But Mom watches the video that shows people actually talking and cracking jokes, and even going to college using the MetaTalker meta machine. Mrs. V explains to Mom how this is exactly right for me. And Mom, instead of being practical and sensible and thrifty like she usually is, seems to agree. Looks like insurance will cover about half the cost, she muses as she navigates the website. Let me talk to Chuck. This is long overdue. Tonight? I ask from my board. Yep, tonight, Mom says, giving me a squeeze. But nothing happens right away in my world. Mom fills out the online application for the machine the next day and sends it in, and I wait. Then we have to ask my doctor to fax in a prescription. I've heard of prescriptions for antibiotics, but for machines? 
This seems crazy. Who'd ever want this machine unless they needed it? And I wait. Next, we have to get approval from our insurance company. More paperwork, more phone calls, more questions, more answers. I wait. A parental financial statement has to be turned in. You've got to be kidding. Why does it have to be so complicated? I wait. The medical form was missing one signature and it had to be resubmitted. I wait. I realize I've been waiting for this thing all my life. Finally, 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 on the Wednesday before Christmas, the MetaTalker arrives. I need no other gift. When I get home from school, Mrs. V tells me that she hurried to my house when she saw the UPS truck pulling up in our driveway. She signed for the package, brought it to her house for safekeeping. The huge brown box sits there, taped and secure, and it's addressed to me. I wiggle and I squeal and I insist we open it right away. I can feel one of my tornadoes coming on. Spastic city, here I come. Calm down, Mellow Yellow, Mrs. V says, placing a hand on my shoulder, but I can't relax. Open, 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 I tap. Well, your mom you knew you'd be impatient, Mrs. V says. So I called her when they arrived, and she told me it was okay for us to open it. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack watching Mrs. V carefully open the edges of the box she lets me pull out the brown paper inside, and then, under a mile of bubble wrap, there it is. The Meta Talker. Smaller than I expected. It's only about the size of my wheelchair tray, but it's sleek and shiny and cool to the touch. It's like a butterfly ready to unfold its wings. Oh boy, I can't wait to try it. Mrs. V plugs it into the wall outlet to, change the, to charge the battery, then pulls out the huge booklet of directions. Phew, she says. This is going to take a year to read and understand. She flops down into an easy chair with Penny on her lap and begins to read. And I just wait. And wait. And wait. And finally, when I know I'm going to explode, I wheel over the table where the MetaTalker sits. I've seen kids at school play video games they've never seen before. And I've seen them program their phones or computers without even touching a book of instructions. So I took my right thumb and pushed the on button. The board whirs and glows, and then a welcome message appears on the screen. I push another button, and a voice that sounds like an Englishman with a really bad head cold blurts out, Welcome to Metatalka! Mrs. V jumps up from the couch. I shriek with joy. Well, it looks like you're way ahead of me, Melody. Not that I'm surprised. She sits Penny down. Now let's see what this machine can do. I feel like Christopher Columbus bumping into America. It had been there all this time, but... He was the first one from his world to find it. I wonder if his heart beat as fast as mine does. We quickly, we quickly discover that the MetaTalker has more than a dozen levels, all easily reached with just one button. So on level one, we program in the names of everyone I know. My name, my family, kids and teachers at school, doctors, neighbors, parents, friends, and of course, Mrs. V. On the second level, she insists that we add all the vocabulary words we've been collecting on our multicolored 3x5-inch flashcards. Type, save, type, save. Mrs. V's fingers flies as she keeps adding more words for me. Lots of our vocabulary words are already in the machine's memory, but she gives me more. 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 Nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, thousands of them, as well as a cool sentence maker that's located on another level. We can prepare hundreds of phrases and sentences and get them with just a touch. Have you heard the latest song? That's what's up. How'd you do on the spelling test? Ordinary words, normal conversation. I've never had that, that's awesome. Another level is for numbers and even computation. I'll be able to do math now. Maybe I won't tell the teachers about that one. And there's a level full of corny jokes and silly sayings with room left for us to add more. Another level plays music. I cannot connect the device. I can connect the device to a computer and download any song I want. I can't wait to search iTunes. Maybe I can ask Rose which songs are cool now. <gasps> Rose! I can talk to Rose now. We stopped programming after a while. Penny needs to be changed and kept occupied, but I'm much too excited to rest. So after Mrs. V gets Penny set up with her dollhouse at the foot of the couch, we add even more words and phrases. Finally, she stops typing and says, Do you want to try it out? The room is absolutely quiet. I stroke the edge of my machine softly, then push two buttons. Thanks, Mrs. V, the computer's voice says. 
She blinks really fast. I do too. She reaches for a tissue. We both need it. Mrs. V tucks the tissue into her pocket, then begins reading again from the instruction manual. <gasps> hey, listen to this, she says. With that connector cord, you can also save longer things that you want to write, like stories or poems to the computer. Wow, I tell the machine to say. Mrs. V nods in agreement. This is going to be fun, but you're going to need lots of practice to make it say what you want, kid. She's right. Many levels have been left blank for users to input their own information. Words, sentences, phone numbers, even pictures. Information can be typed directly into the machine, or it can be downloaded from a computer. It's a little overwhelming. We can design this to fit you, Melody, Mrs. V tells me. This will be your world. So let's take our time and make it exactly what you need. I am so happy. I almost feel like hugging the machine, but that would look really weird, so instead I named it. That's probably pretty dumb, but sometimes it's good to have something that nobody else knows but you. I'm not going to type the name into the machine because it's personal, but in my mind, I'm going to call the meta talker Elvira after the song I like. Yep, my heart's on fire for Elvira. While Mrs. V plays with Penny for a while, I continue to explore what Elvira can do. One of the first changes I want to make is its hello message and the voice that speaks it. The computer-produced greeting sounds really fake, but the machine offers me several female voices to choose from, as well as a bunch of different languages. I pick a voice called Trish. She actually sounds like a girl, not a grown-up. I wouldn't mind sounding like her if I could talk. Bienvenue, Trish says in French. I know that means welcome. I push the button for German, and she says, Whew, here we go. Welcome in. I even find something that sounds like Funying when I touch the button for Chinese. I stop for a minute and stare at the board. It never occurred to me that there are kids like me in Germany and China and France who need a machine that helps them talk. Mrs. V returns to me and helps me change the original welcome message for a very mechanical sounding, welcome to MetaTalker, to Trisha's voice saying, hi, I'm Melody, talk to me. I can't wait to take it to school and introduce my new computer to everybody there. I wonder what Rose will say. By now, mom and dad have called to check on how we're doing, how much progress we made. They're both anxious to get here and see what the device can do. So while we wait, Mrs. V suggests that we just keep programming it, adding more and more. She thinks I should practice using it for a couple of weeks before taking it to school. I don't really want to wait, but I have to agree with her that this is going to take some time. I want to be able to use the system to talk like an ordinary kid. Well, sort of. So we return to words. I want to input thousands of them. Notebook, marker, homework, assignment, test, positive, negative, fingernail, nail polish, outfit, backpack, purse, scared, excited, purple. Then we type in more phrases, hundreds of them, to the mall, from a distance, in the middle of, as a result, the reason why. Lastly, we get to group some sentences, dozens of them. What time is it? What's up with that? <laughs> you crack me up. I'm so excited. And then the doorbell rings. When dad and mom come to pick me up, dad is ready for his camcorder. His hands are shaking. Show us how it works, honey, he says. I can't believe dad's making a video of me saying my first words. It's almost like when he filmed Penny's first words. Well, not really. I type very carefully and push the button to make the machine speak. Hi, dad. Hi, mom. I am so happy. Mom gets all teary-eyed and her nose gets red. She's looking at me all soft and gooey. When I think about it, I realize I've never said any words to them directly. So I push a couple of buttons and the machine speaks the words that I've never been able to tell my parents. I love you. Mom completely loses it. She bubbles up with tears and grabs dad. I think he might be sniffing back a couple of tears himself, but he records all of it. Whew, it's a big chapter for Melody. So add a response and answer the question. <laughs> 